Come be a part of Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics with your host, Dr. Ed Holliday. Hear the voices of liberty speaking all across America. Doc Holliday provides thought-provoking interviews and commentary about the issues and actions that are afflicting this country and what we need to do to get America back on track. Get fired up. Get inspired. Get on board with Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics right now. And here we go. And once again, that's the sound of rock cracking. You got Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics right here on webtalkradio.net. That's webtalkradio.net. And wow, yes, we are in the middle of the month of May. And I told you we we're trying to keep up with the Arizona election audit. Not a recount, but an audit. So uh, we're going to spend most of the time of today's show to just give you an update of what's coming out of Arizona and why why it's so important so stick uh, close to today as we uh, detail some news and it's hard to get it you can't find news all over the internet all over the mainstream media about what's going on in arizona but we've uh depended on our friends at newsmax and uh gateway pundit the gateway pundit so we have got some stories i'm going to put together if you hadn't heard much about it because if you listen to anything <laughs> And unless it's Newsmax or Gateway Pundit, you probably haven't heard anything about the Arizona audit that's going on. So uh, we'll bring you some details about that. There's nothing that's it's not complete, but they're in the process if they don't get stopped. So we got some important news to tell you what's what they're finding out there in Arizona. And it's very, very depressing if you want free and fair elections. So we'll get that to you. But before we get to that, uh, I got to touch base on the economy and uh, some news that broke out. Plus, we know that rockets were fired into Israel. And we got a little bit on the crypto corner we'll put in at the end of the show. And let me just say right now, next week, we'll have a more detailed show about the economy. We did one last month about this is an economy unlike we've, unlike we've ever seen before. And we're seeing more and more signs of that where they were, there's like 8 million unfilled jobs in America, and we're paying unemployment out the wazoo. Something's not right there, and we got shortages because people aren't working and, and when they're able to work in places. And that's caused these shortages, along with some uh, missteps, uh, everything from government to business leaders. But especially what the Biden administration did just last week, uh, there was the hack and a ransom paid for the Colonial pipeline, pipeline that affected gas uh, gas stations all up and down the East Coast. And guess what? It 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 just broadened the whole aspect of why the Keystone pipeline should still be going on, and that's what Joe Biden scratched off the list first thing threw people out of work and and stopped the pipeline now we see how valuable and how important pipelines are to not only our economy our national defense and everybody's livelihood so the we, we we'll do a more detailed uh show next week about the economy where we are where we're going and how important it is to get back to conservative values Look, let me just give you a little hint next week what's going on. You've heard this term, the AOC and Bernie Sanders and so many on the left, the far left, the socialists, they want the uniform basic income allowance. Guess what? We've tried it. We are doing it right now, paying unemployment for people to stay at home, and you can't go out and find a restaurant that's a full because not because they don't want to feed people, because they don't have the workers. They don't have the staff. You can go traveling. You can't go into a McDonald's in many places. Oh, you can drive through and get your food, but they don't have enough workers to clean and staff the inside of the restaurant, so they lock the doors and say it's a drive through only. And that's not just at McDonald's. It's many of the fast food places. They're begging for workers. They are begging 
for people for interviews to come in and just interview. Some places are paying people money just to come in and interview. And yet we're paying out billions and billions of dollars for unemployment. And it's it's that's the kind of economy. So you don't want to miss next week's show. I'm just giving you a preview of that. And what what are, what's going on in Israel as this show goes on the air? I don't know. I had to tape it when we know there's over fifteen hundred rockets fired into Israel. Israel has what we call the Iron Dome, and if you don't know what that is, it is the strategic defense initiative. What Ronald Reagan called was called Star Wars and laughed at in the 80s, but that was the beginning of what America has to try to uh, knock rockets out of the air before they hit. And what the Israelis did, they took some American technology, enhanced it, made it the best in the world, and now that's what they call the Iron Dome defense. So the, the Palestinians, Hamas, has shot over... At, at the time we were doing this show, they've shot over 1,500 rockets to kill, shooting them into civilian places. And luckily, the Iron Dome defense has knocked out well over 90% of the incoming rockets. And guess what? We got people, the the squad, AOC, and uh, the different uh, members of Congress who make up what we call the squad, they, they are saying... It, it's not fair because the Israelis have an iron dome. Well, it's not fair to shoot rockets to kill civilians. And guess what? They're shooting the rockets from hospitals and from nursery schools and day schools for children. That's where the rockets are coming from. So it makes it very tough for Israeli the Israelis to uh, fire back and knock out the rockets. So... Uh, which is a big violation to have uh, hospitals and and schools where you're shooting your missiles from. Violation of UN. But how many people are talking about that from the squad and on the Democratic side? And we see the old-time Democrats that are fading away, like Pelosi and Biden and Schumer. They they have less and less power, and they're trying to side with Israel they say they are, and they've put up a very uh, weak response, saying, well, Israel can defend itself. And then Joe Biden pulls all the American forces, uh, you know, advisors out of Israel. He doesn't want anybody to get hurt. But at the same time, how much support is he giving to Israel? We don't know. I don't know how things are going to turn out. we we'll pray for the best. But Israel, not Netanyahu, the prime minister now, has said... Hamas must pay a price because you can't be allowed to, at will to shoot 1,500 missiles in to civilian places and not pay a price for it. So a lot going on there in the Middle East. But let's, let's uh, get back to what the show's about. And I'm sorry we had to talk a little bit about the economy and Israel. So we, but we do want to tell everybody to pray. For everybody in the Middle East, everybody there in uh, Israel, and and that includes the Arabs, the Palestinians, and pray for Hamas that they that see the the murderous activity and how awful it is to peace to stop it. But let's uh, let's keep uh, Israel and uh, all the inhabitants there in the Middle East in our prayers, and we do. And one thing I want to say is as we go through this, we'll keep our eye on that. But, you know, Donald Trump, President Trump, had signed some peace agreements with the, some of the Arab nations. And now are those in jeopardy? What Will uh, will President Joe Biden strengthen those, tear them up, forget about them? And guess what? We know Hamas got a lot of the <laughs> They got their materials to make these rockets and these these updated, more sophisticated rockets, they came from Iran. Joe Biden and Barack Obama's good friends, it seems like. They want to go back and and uh, renegotiate this Iran deal, nuclear deal. 
And now, are those their good friends? They're bombing Israel, and they want to negotiate with these terrorists? You know, I mean, Iran is supplying the terrorists, supplying Hamas with what they're using to shoot into innocent civilian targets. So, a uh, lot we got to watch, and we'll keep you posted here on this show. But let, let's go from there. Let's go to Arizona. What's going on in Arizona? Well, if you listen to this show, we've talked about there's an Arizona election audit, audit of the election back in November. There were a lot of uh, claims of fraud, voter fraud, and conditions that were just seems very suspect. So the Arizona Senate has voted and paid for doing an audit. But what are, we, what are we finding out about the audit? Well, there's a lot of things that are really, really scary. Uh, let me, um, I've just, let, let's play this little clip from Newsmax and what they had talking about the audit. Not many people are covering it uh, news-wise. So take a little uh, listen to this from Newsmax last week. The Arizona election audit in Maricopa County entering its third week as the battle between Democrats and Republicans rages on there. But the... Um, the audit itself could end up back in the courts after Maricopa County supervisors refused to hand over network routers and certain computer passwords as well. For the latest, let's check in with Newsmax correspondent James Klug live in Arizona. James. Well, Bob, I'm outside of the Arizona Veterans Memorial Coliseum where this audit's actually taking place. And as you can see right behind me, we have uh, state troopers that are uh, sitting right at the entrance of what is pretty much a completely surrounded building with fencing all the way around. Nobody is coming in uh, without being credentialed or on a specific list if they are allowed in. But uh, something very important is that this isn't just a recount. They have made it very clear that this is an audit where they're looking at uh, not only creasings on paper to tell if they're mail-in ballots or not, but also the material, the pens used, uh, the thickness of paper, everything like that. This is actually the most detailed audit that we have seen thus far. Now, see, that's the difference between a recount and an audit. An audit's looking at the whole, all the aspect of, uh, like they said, creases in paper. If it's a mail-in ballot, did it have creases or was it just handed in if it's mailed it can be just handed in with no creases and the thickness of the paper some people claim that they were uh, uh, copy ballots and if uh, if that's happened then of course the thickness of the paper would be different and the ink used a lot of there were claims that some uh, ink was not read by the computer and they, they were handing out the uh, kind of pens that wouldn't read in some places so we need to know this. Is it a lie? Is it rumor? But we need to know. And that's why this audit is so important. But they go into a lot more than that. We're going to detail some of that here in just a minute. And some of the things that were found out, uh, we, the uh, head of the Republican Party there in Arizona, Dr. Kelly Ward, she uh, will play her in a minute and let her tell you some of those things. But it's really shocking. The shocking part is what they're finding out is that who controlled the election? They were supposed to get the uh, passwords during the, uh, the forensic audit, and they're supposed to. The judge said you have to release passwords to the election commission there in Maricopa County. And what they're doing, they're not counting the whole ca uh, state of Arizona; they're counting the uh, Maricopa County because that's where uh, over 2 million voters are most of the voters in Arizona in that Maricopa County but guess what <laughs> they found out the election commission the people who run the election in Arizona said oh we don't have the passwords well how do you how do you protect the information oh they have passwords but we don't have them so if they didn't have the password who ran the election and and that's what's scary. It doesn't look like the Maricopa County officials who ran the election were in control of the election. The only people who got the password is the Dominion, the private company Dominion, and because they're using Dominion software. And there's a subpoena to turn over the passwords. And Dominion says they were not going to turn over passwords. So what what happens? Uh 
you know that <laughs> that that there's there's the uh, legal problem and then we go back how can we trust a free and fair election if we have no one who can get into the election machines to just take a look and uh there was a one of the tweets was going if dominion had access to the machines and maricopa county did not then who deleted the databases oh did you not know that yes before when the judge said you mu- that the audit was going to go through, someone deleted the databases. Hmm. Someone deleted the databases. So, well, as, as a county election, say, okay, we got copies. No, they don't because they don't have any passwords to get anywhere. Uh, that, this could get very complicated uh, very quickly. And the thing is, there's going to be a lot of people who go, okay, there's no story here. Let's just walk away. There's a big story here. If Arizona is not running their own election, if they're, if they're giving everything over to a private company to run the entire election and tell who won and not even have passwords to even check the information, then there is not an election commission doing its job. People have failed if a private company is running the whole thing and has all the passwords and nobody can get the information, not even the election commission, and now it can't even be audited. So that's the scary thing that is uh, going on in Arizona. And how many other states has it happened in? That's why it's so critical to get everything right in Arizona. What they're trying to do is get the entire audit before they release information. And now they have released this that they can't get the passwords, they can't go in and audit, and somebody has deleted all the databases that uh, was, that were supposed to be uh, kept. So what is going on? Well, we'll tell you a little bit more after this break. First, let me remind you, you're listening to Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. You're listening to us right here on webtalkradio.net. I'm your host, Dr. Ed Holliday. Glad to have you. Glad to have everybody listening and we do have listeners all across the country and even outside the country. Thank goodness. Uh, we, we appreciate everybody that listens to Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. And it's very important, this show, talking about what's going on in Arizona. And we're glad to provide you some information because it's just not happening in the mainstream media or any media hardly. Uh, you, don't get, you, you just don't get uh, the information on what uh, the audit and how important the audit is. But we got some important things to tell you, and we'll play this clip from Dr. Uh, Kelly, Kelly Ward in just a minute. But let me remind our listeners, if you haven't got her book, it's called Bedrock Truths. It's written by Dr. Ed Holliday, Dr. Alveda King, and Dr. Alex McFarland. We'd love to get a copy of that book to you. And uh, we do have a Facebook page. If you're not aware of that, just go to uh, Dr. Ed Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. It's easy to look that up on Facebook, uh, look it up, like it. We we don't just plaster all kind of stories over there. We try to get a couple of things in each week that we can't necessarily get on the uh, radio show here. But I want you to know that it's important. Not that Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics is the greatest show on earth. I mean, we're not here every day. We try to give you some update each week with some things that I think is very important that you hear here that you won't hear other places so we appreciate your listening we appreciate you telling your friends and neighbors about doc holiday's rock split and politics but this is what's important that those who know that socialism is cruel it will not work and our country will suffer under socialism's policies we have to band together i don't like everything donald trump said i don't like the fact that Liz Cheney can't get it out of her mind that she just thinks Trump was a horrible president. But she lost her leadership position last week because she cannot move to the future. And I, if you like Donald Trump or if you hate Donald Trump, right now what matters is do you hate socialism? Are you willing to stand against a socialist? And I've had Democrat after Democrat tell me I am not a socialist. But my friends, as long as they harbor the socialist in the Democratic ranks and we keep moving to the left, they are fighting for the socialism 
and the Marxism that comes along with it. Why did the Marxists not run anybody for president? They said, we're getting what we need from the Democratic Party. And now it's important. And when we see our country on the edge, if we, we, if we are just right in the uh, abyss, right on the edge of the abyss, if we get pushed into socialism, uh, one day it'll fail, but maybe after 20, 40, 50, in, in Russia, it was over 80 years before it fell. And think what happens with technology. If the old Soviet Union had the technology of computers and what we have today, and you see even where Donald Trump can't even get a platform to get his message out, what I'm saying is it's very important. Liz Cheney, stand up against socialism. I don't care what you think about Donald Trump now. He might be the next nominee for the Republican Party. He may not for president. I don't know this. But I do know socialism will hurt America. It will, it will be incredib- incredibly suffering for Americans all over. Even the ones who believe in socialism and think it's going to be a great green world. They're wrong. We know they're wrong. But if we don't stand up and fight it together, that means Liz Cheney. I don't hate Liz Cheney. She may have some decent ideas. She's still a congresswoman from Wyoming. She'll have an election. They'll see what the Wyoming people want to do. And I, I'm thankful for our listeners out there in Wyoming. I know we got some listeners out there, and thank you for listening. And I'm telling you, Liz Cheney has made a decision, and that's what that I don't agree with, speaking out against Trump. But we need her now to vote everything anti-socialist. Liz, we need you. We need your dad. We need the Bush family. We need the Republican parties to band together. Don't let Donald Trump, the Republican Party is bigger than Donald Trump. And the majority of Republicans want him to be the presidential candidate if he should choose to run then you've got to come along with us because it's between us and socialism. There might have been a little play last time. People just hated Trump. People said, well, Biden's the old kind of Democrat. You can see exactly what he is. He's a socialist because he may, he may not have been when he, was in his, when he had all his mind together. But right now, we have our country being pushed into socialism. Look at what they're doing, trying to make D.C. a state against what the Constitution says. Look what they're doing with uniform basic income allowances. We have it already, at least through September. And Joe Biden said, well, if he offered a job, we'll take it. You know, you can't, everything he says is like a joke coming out of his mouth. I don't even know what he's talking about. It's like Barack Obama would do, would say things and do directly opposite, just like Bill Clinton did, like Democrats do, say one thing and then go to the socialist route. They push and push and spend and spend, and then it makes a country suffer under inflation, what we're seeing now, and that's why we have to band together. You don't have to join the Republican Party if you don't want to. I'm not saying you have to join the Republican Party. Right now, it's the biggest thing we have to, to come together and reach out and include libertarians, include independents, include everybody that is against socialism and Marxist policies. It's time to stand up. And that includes you in the Democratic Party if you're a Democrat and sick of what's going on in your party. We don't have time to fight each other. We have got to agree we're going to stand up against socialism. That means Democrats must be defeated until they get the socialism out of their ranks. And that's my spill right there. So sorry I went off on that, but it's so important. Now, let me play this clip from uh, Kelly Ward. Dr. Kelly Ward is head of the Republican Party there in Arizona. Take a listen to what she has to say. Hello, everyone. Welcome to America's Audit Update from the Republican Party of Arizona. I am your chairwoman, Dr. Kelly Ward. 
We have some extremely important and breaking news this morning coming directly from the Arizona Senate, which is conducting the forensic audit of some 2.1 million ballots cast in the 2020 election. Arizona Senate President Karen Fan, in a stinging letter to the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, has outlined serious discrepancies and irregularities uncovered by the audit that have the potential to open a thorough investigation of the mishandling of 2020 election ballots, data, and equipment by Maricopa County officials. This news comes on top of a serious breach of voter identification information during the last election, as reported by the new Maricopa County recorder, Stephen Richer. According to a letter sent to voters by Richer in November 2020, an individual accessed private voter IDs that should have been secured. Arizona Senate President Fan's letter outlines three serious issues she wants immediately addressed with the threat of legislative subpoena and further legal action if Maricopa County does not comply. One, ongoing noncompliance with the previous legislative subpoenas, which the courts have ruled valid and enforceable. In short, the Arizona Senate does not buy the county excuse that release of routers and passwords used in the election would endanger the lives of law enforcement or disclose sensitive health care information of voters. Let me just jump in here, uh, Dr. Ward, and just say, that, yeah, that there's throwing up excuses of why uh, the, some records can't be uh, looked into, why you can't open these up, and say, claiming there's medical records with the election voter election <laughs> who's voting records now if that's true it's laughable but it's also dangerous who would put medical records with the voter records if they do somebody's violating the HIPAA laws i think but uh let's go ahead and let dr ward finish this out if true Parent, uh, Karen Fan, President Fan, calls the commingling of that information with election data an alarming indictment of the county's lax data security measures. She wants the Arizona Senate's experienced digital forensics firm to inspect and review virtual images of the election routers. Two, chain of custody and ballot organization anomalies, which the audit has uncovered, including omissions and inconsistencies in the handling and storage of the ballots. They include lack of chain of custody documentation, unsealed ballot storage bags, batch dividers missing, cut seals, and boxes sealed only with regular old tape and not tamper-resistant tape. And potentially explosive news that the audit team has encountered serious discrepancies between the actual number of ballots in a batch and the total denoted in the accompanying paperwork. In most examples cited, there are fewer ballots than listed. That is disturbing news, and the Arizona Senate and Arizona voters are going to want answers. We want answers. Number three, delayed, deleted databases. The audit has discovered entire database directories missing or deleted, suggesting critical information from the 2020 general election had been removed prior to Maricopa County complying with the Arizona Senate subpoena. If true, and there are no backups of these directories, we will be entering heretofore untested waters with the possibility of placing the validity of the entire 2020 election into question. The Arizona State Senate has, has called for Maricopa County officials to address these issues at a live streamed meeting at the Arizona State Capitol on Tuesday, May 18th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. That will be something to watch. Yep, that'll be something to watch. We'll see what's going on this week. And uh, there, there's so much more that's involved. And, of course, they say they want to get everything together before they release what's going on and what they find out. They're not putting partial reports out. They said they want to know uh, exactly what everything is. But they had to say, hey, we can't get passwords. Why, why can't you get passwords? Well, uh, it, uh, you tell me. <laughs> you know, if Dominion is the only one that has them, then who ran the election? It evidently wasn't the Arizona, uh, it was not the Arizona Elections Commission or, or the county if, if they gave everything over to uh, Dominion to run it. And so there, there's, a, there's this whole development that's trying to keep the audit from going on. Legal, they keep using legal uh, requirements, trying to shut it down. And just... Uh, that there was an emergency meeting that the Maricopa County, Maricopa County Board of Supervisors called uh, uh, last week, and it, they were not able to provide those passwords. 
And so uh, it was discovered during that was that the entire database for the 2020 general election showing the results tally and the reporting had been deleted from the voting machines. Now, a judge says, you know, they were supposed to be able to audit that, but somebody, somebody actually deleted that after uh, it was a decision made to make the audit. So who did that? There's a lot of questions that are building up, and, and we need to know. And the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors knows more than to let know. Uh, Chairman Jack Sellers stated that at the emergency executive session that the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors may consider legal advice because of recent communication and accusations from the Arizona Senate regarding the November 3, 2020 election and board responsibilities and authority, elections, election equipment and ballots, subpoena compliance, and litigation. So uh, they've gone in an executive session to CYA probably. I, I don't know. We don't know what all is going on. But we do know the audit at this point is still going on, and hopefully they will get a report, and we will hear about what all went on right and what went wrong in the Arizona election. So that's uh, Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. Next week, we're going to deal more into the economy and what's going on in this first time every economy where we got, uh, <laughs> like I said, we got 8 million jobs opening. Openings. We need workers. And yet the Democrats forced through making us borrow more and more billions of dollars paying higher the federal part of unemployment all the way through September, and we don't have enough workers now. I said we got some people who are not competent leading our government. Absolutely pathetic. And I'll, I'll end with this note right here. It was so funny last week when you talked about uh, it's not funny what's going on in our economy, but this is the kind of people that are in the Biden administration. Uh, Biden's White House economic advisor, she was talking about the bad jobs report in April. And uh, her name is Cecilia Rouse. And on Friday last week, she blamed that the bad April jobs report was on Easter being in March this year. Huh. That's that maybe why we got a problem, because Easter was on April 4th. And she blamed it all on Easter being in March. Pathetic. Really, really pathetic. See you next week. Doc Holliday's Rock Split in Politics. Thanks for joining us today, and remember to listen again next week for another edition of Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. You can order Ed's new book, Bedrock Truths, by clicking on the book cover right in front of you on the screen, or visit DocHolliday.org. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again next week.